Yeah, what's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Prison Break Raw. I'm your host, the one and only Big JD. Go ahead, get this channel subscribed, share, leave some messages or comments, hit that thumbs up for the like, notification bell to be informed on all episodes when they drop. Most importantly, be sure to share. Sharing is caring. Share it to your family, your friends, your coworkers, anywhere and everywhere in your social media platforms. Let's get this raw and uncut material out there to the millions that don't know we're here. This topic right here is another fan request. GP inmates, SNY inmates, as they pertain to the very unique prison system of the California Department of Corruptions and Rehumiliation, or CDCR if you prefer. What are they? Who are they? And what is the process for becoming SNY? And why do most people end up over there? And is there an open dialogue between non SNY and SNY? inmates in the CDCR itself? Is there an open discussion? Is there a backstage, behind-the-scenes dialogue going on between the two regarding prison conditions and prison reform and justice for all and blah, 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 this, that, and the third? Is there some big homie on death row looking down upon social media deciding what videos need to be removed, what videos can say? Who gets the blessing to talk about what? It's been brought to my attention that a lot of this chatter is going on, and I'm going to give you my take on it from being a detached person, non-biased, a private citizen that is no longer a part of that world in any way, shape, or form, and doesn't really have a horse in the race one way or the other. And I'm going to give it to you from my experience going all the way back to 1993 because I've seen this grow. This PC pandemic turned into what it is. And when I say PC, I don't mean politically correct. I'm talking about protective custody. Because that's what it is. I mean, let's not dress it up to be something that it's not. I'm just going to call it for what it is. SNY is protective custody. That was what it's designed to be. It was a designation set aside for people that couldn't function with the other two-thirds of the California prison population. So currently one third of the California prison population is in this S and Y designation. So we're going to get into all that, talk about the chatter, the possibility of that happening, how death row factors into all this, all these different things. Stick around for this one right here. You ain't going to want to miss it. In order to understand what all these terms mean, GP, S and Y, whatnot, this and that, we have to break down what they what they mean as far as how they're defined in the CDC itself. So when you say GP, basically what that means is that means general population. And what is general population in total? So general population is a facility that is designated as being a place where everybody can function together. Everybody goes to yard together, everybody goes to rec together, everybody goes to the chapel together, they go to Education services, visitation, they all live in the same housing unit. It could be segregated on racial lines and gang lines as well. But nevertheless, they all function together and they're not separated from each other. That would be something totally different. Like, let's say somebody is taken out of general population and put into ad seg or administrative segregation. This person would be removed from general population because they were deemed a threat to the safety and security of the institution itself. So when you say GP, it's kind of a broad, ambiguous statement for somebody that is not in ad seg, or to take it to another level, somebody that is not in another administrative determinant, which would be like, let's say, the SHU, or which is an acronym for SHU, Security Housing Unit, or another acronym that you heard sometimes, which is called PHU, Protective Housing Unit, or what we like to call the poo or the poop. That's where all the real funny bunnies end up. High notoriety individuals, people like Charles Manson, various other weird cannibals and whatnot, and all that end up in the PHU. And then, of course, you have Condemned Row, which is Death Row, and that is another situation in itself that's removed from GP. So can S and Y be a GPR? People have asked me, does S and Y have GP or is S and Y considered GP? Yes, 
SNY is considered GP itself. It's called SNY slash GP. When you look at somebody's paperwork that they like to talk about, the paperwork, the driver's license and all that, it will tell you exactly if that person is an SNY or not an SNY. Take this example right here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and black out the names because the person's name is irrelevant. We're just using this as a template, as an example for what to look for. Now, when I'm looking at somebody's driver's license or paperwork, I'm looking for one line item in it to tell me exactly what this person is. And that's down there in the classification factors, which will say if this person is active mainline or, you know, regular housing, GP, for GP purposes, or is this person S and Y? Now, if I'm on a GP, an active mainline, I'll never see this kind of paperwork right here. But looking at this person's document, this line item right here tells me exactly what this person was when they were in the CDC. When they received this 128G classification chrono, it's basically letting the committee know that this person is S and Y. And this person is placed in this facility for S and Y purposes. Also, the date of this document shows some other fine details that a lot of the other people wouldn't know. Like, during this year and during this time, this person was in being considered for MCCF placement, which is a modified community correctional facility, which is S and Y, which was S and Y since 2009 or 2008, and at Delano. So this person being a level two or level three inmate going to Delano, of which was S and Y at the time as well. But you don't really need to go through all that because down below it says this person is S and Y slash GP, S and Y GP, an S and Y sensitive needs yard inmate in the general population of the sensitive needs yard itself. If the person was just a regular active mainline GP, there would be nothing in there that said anything about S and Y at all. It wouldn't even be listed in there. It'd be, it wouldn't even be worth the ink, and they're not going to waste the ink on something that doesn't pertain to the person's classification status, the chrono. So that pretty much sums up what the difference between a GP and an S and Y GP is. So technically, a person who's on S and Y can tell you that they're GP, and they wouldn't be lying to you. But for somebody to say that they're active GP is, is what I'm really looking to hear. And that's usually the terminology that we use with, between ourselves. That's not something that's CDC-related, but CDC has coined the phrase active to determine who is an active gang member and who is not an active gang member on these two sides. Now what they're doing is they're setting up what's called non-designated facilities, which is a 50-50 design, and both of these S and Y and GP yards run or mainline active mainline run parallel to each other, but they don't function together, but they're both still considered GP mainlines. I know it's confusing, but this is, this is the terminology. When people say GP S and Y, that's simply the CDC trying to, to simplify it so that it makes sense to, to everybody in the committee, because a lot of these people don't have really much over a high school education to begin with. So they have to simplify it in the best way they can in order for it to make sense to them and to make it easy as far as placing people in whatever the CSR has, has um, endorsed them for. Now we get into the finer details of this. Does S and Y and active mainline GP communicate in any way, shape, or form, even on these 50-50s or anywhere else? Is there some main dude sitting on his lofty throne in death row dictating what goes on in all these different facilities and stuff. Okay, let's break that down a little bit. Now think about what somebody is saying to begin with. Now in the Title 15, which is the California Code of Regulations, it's considered to be the CDC Bible. It's law binding for all the procedures and the practices that go on in the CDC itself. In that section of, of what it takes to debrief or go to S&Y or to drop out, you have to go through several steps. 
The first one that is stressed is that the individual in question, the candidate, I guess you can call him, is discouraged from self dis- self incrimination. So if they start to self incriminate themselves, they'll cut the interview off right then and there and start it over. They're not looking to incriminate the individual that is looking to debrief and drop out. They want information about the organization that that person came from. So that person, in essence, needs to snitch or rat out his former um, associates or his brothers that he used to be a part of, his camaradas and all that. He has to rat them out and break down everything that went on in the organization, where all the fierros are buried, you know, who's running the dope, what big homie are they in communication with on that yard? Because big homies, certain big homies have pull over different yards. You know, what is going on with this? Who's that? What's that? What do the symbols mean? What are the, what are some of the codes that they, that they're maybe, they may not be aware of? All this is being broken down to what's called IGI, the internal gang investigator. So when a person finally goes through all these steps and, and completes the step-down process and goes to the S&Y yard via the debriefing process, that person would be on complete what's called complete disregard status to anybody on an active mainline. There would be no, nothing to say to this person at all. Now, this ain't the only route in which to go to the S&Y yard, as you know. You got a lot of different kinds of funny bunny type people over there. You got seat sniffing, child molesting, diaper sniping, tree jumping, rapists, cannibals, weirdos, celebrities, former police officers, people that got banged off the yard. And what you mean what it means to be banged off the yard means that this person fucked up, either got in debt or did something or other, got stabbed, or had two or three people take off on him on the yard or in the housing unit to get rid of them. Now, I've been in a back and forth with somebody about this before. Somebody tried to assure me that if the homies stab another homie, he's good to come back to the yard. Do you understand how fucking ignorant that sounds? Right? When you have been deemed a threat to the safety and security of the institution and, and, and your safety concerns are in question... They're going to put you in ad seg. Now, do you honestly believe that a bunch of homies are going to run down to the program office and tell IGI, hey, you know what? That guy's all good now. I mean, just forget about the six holes that we just blasted in him. He's good to come back out. They're never going to let him back out. And if he got smashed off the yard by his own car, he's going to get what's called a 114D lockup order from UCC in ad seg. So wherever CSR endorses, to, endorses him to next... Whatever yard he touches down on, the homies are going to ask for that 114D. 114D is going to say that he got smashed by his own car. They're going to smash him on sight right there. So he'll never walk on another active main line again. So he will be forced to take the back door into S&Y and end up on S&Y. That is a possibility. But most people that ask to debrief, that ask to be removed from the yard, you got to give them something in return. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat this and and try to dress it up, like I said, in any other way than what it is. But if you debrief, you're basically, you're you're, you're telling on somebody. I mean, that's just what it is. I mean, you could go off on me. I don't really care. I I don't sugarcoat nothing when it comes to these things. So the dialogue, an open dialogue between, like, let's say, one of my people, Sureño, with a former Sureño that is now maybe a two fiver or whatnot, on S and Y, I would say that it more than likely, but then again, nothing surprises me anymore. But I'd be willing to say that no, this ain't going on. Why, if it was me, why would I want to talk to somebody who debriefed? Basically, how do I know that this person ain't trying to fish for more information to feed back to IGI? I wouldn't be able to trust this person in any way, shape, or form. So I wouldn't have nothing to say to them. And it wouldn't matter criminal justice reform, prison reform, better living conditions aside. Most people that are involved in the business of prison politics and all don't really give a fuck about all that. I didn't care about all that shit. 
I mean, yeah, we did our write-ups. We, you know, filed for legal action and stuff. But we did that amongst ourselves. We don't need the other side of the fence to help us with that. Usually a class action lawsuit only requires one or more or two or more people in order to make a class action. So we don't really need those people to begin with. And it's a lot of bad blood because of the process that some of these people have taken in order to get out. And I've been in places like Palm Hall, at Chino, where a whole floor was S&Y. And, I mean, we would try to do the shutdowns, and now they'd be disrespecting, calling people bitches and punks and all that shit behind a locked door where you can't get to them. Sticking their middle finger out talking about, you can't get me, you fucking punk, and all that shit like that. Trying to do our workout and them yelling and being disrupted during the workout. So I can't imagine that anybody would want to communicate with anybody on that side if they're on an active mainline. I mean, but that's just me. And if I was in a facility where one of my homies was attempting to communicate with them, I would strongly urge him not to for a lot of these reasons that I've listed. Now that I'm out in society and I'm a private citizen and a taxpayer and all that, how do I see that now? The way I look at it now is I will respect you if you're up front with me. If you tell me that you're S&Y or you dropped out and all this and this and that, I'm going to respect you for being honest. But it's the ones that hide out and not going to get into who's doing it, but one person was exposed for actually being S&Y and they were trying to brand themselves as a, being a GP person. You got other people that are out there that say they're GP and they were never really GP for very long. They ended their stay as S&Y, but they're, they're false advertising themselves to be something that they're not. I know this to be true. Several others know this to be true. And what are the signs of seeing somebody that was probably an S and Y that might be on social media? Well, if they're willing to give up a whole lot of information, a lot of detailed factors about the prison system and who's doing what, and they're throwing like a lot of these different names of, of, of things that they were doing, that these people were doing, chances are they're S and Y. Because they don't really have any filter when it comes to these things. A lot of us that walked out of the system without actually fucking up somewhere to end up in that situation, it's very hard for us to talk about the fine details of things or to even mention names or do anything like that. Because it's just something that we have been programmed not to do. And another thing is, is if I fuck up in any way, shape, or form, I get myself in debt or do all these things... Why am I going to tell on everybody else that had nothing to do with my mistake? So that's the way I look at all that. Even though I'm out here now, I still view it the same way. And then we got death row. Somebody asked me, is there a big homie on death row that's basically telling people to take videos down and, and do this and do that and giving, the peop giving certain people the blessing to talk about shit? Has anybody on death row approached me and told me to take down any videos? First off, if anybody on death row was going to tell me to take down a video, I'd tell them how many different kind of ways they can go fuck themselves. Because what I do is none of their business. Pure and simple. And furthermore, I'm not aware of any big homies of mine that are on death row. And I'm not aware of any big homies in any organization that's on death row. I'm not aware of anybody that's up there on death row in California. If they're on death row in the feds or something like that, who knows? But on California, not currently aware of anybody like that that's up there. And plus, that's a whole nother level of, of shit, man. That's like, if anybody has any kind of say-so over what's going on out on these yards, that person would be in the shoe somewhere in Pelican Bay. So I hope that kind of breaks down all of that to you. Not going to, you know, like I said... For those people out there, for those of you that, that were S&Y or you're S&Y, if you're up front with it, I will respect you. I will give you that respect. As far as, like, what are my opinions of you or, and, and how you went about getting off the yard is, is really not important. That's between you and whatever your reasons are. It has nothing to do with me. That's just the way I roll. As long as you ain't a child molester, as long as you ain't a seat-sniffing, cannibal, tree-jumping rapist, weirdo like that, 
then I really, I'm not really concerned with you. Honestly, though, if you did go through that process, because I know what the details of the process is, don't expect me to divulge any secret information to you or, or information to you at all about anything, because that's just not going to do it. You know what I mean? But that's, that's my take on it. The only thing that I would ask is that you respect the way I feel, and I'm going to respect the way that you feel. This ain't, this ain't all about tit for tat and disrespecting because I'm not disrespecting nobody. I'm just breaking down what the mindset is of somebody who's an active, mainline, GP person dealing with communicating with people that are not. I would be willing to go out on a limb and bet every dollar in my bank account that it does not happen at all. But if it does, doesn't surprise me because this day and age, everything is weird nowadays. Prison Break Raw, uncut, uncensored, no holds barred, not sugar code, not politically correct, all up in your face, slapping you with that dick reality, and I'm out.